All right, line A4, learning task eight, and this is gonna be video B that we are going to do out of that one. We covered the first uh, section, parallel RL, now we're gonna jump into parallel RC. So we're starting over here now at figure number four, which is gonna be my example number three, and it's a RC circuit. Now there are three branches inside of this thing, but if we take a look at it, two of those branches form resistances, and the other one forms our capacitance, which means that we are going to be able to take individual values for each one of these and we'll be able to add those together, whether as current or as power. And we're gonna be able to add those onto these ones, once again, whether as current or as power. We'll start by moving this whole thing over to the side though right now. So we've got a little bit of working room. Maybe we'll make it a little bit larger so we can go and draw some values better onto it. And let's identify what we do have inside of here. First of all, I see that I have got 60 Hertz and I have got a XC over here. Now, I don't know what size of capacitor is inside here, but I do know that I've got an XC, so I could work backwards from my frequency and my XC to go and find my C value if we decide that we're going to go and take a look for that. I also see this 120 volts that I'm going to go and have. Once again, it is so critical to know that we're doing parallel, so our volts are the same across all components. And really, when you take a look at it, if you know your XC and your R's, we're gonna be very easily able to do that E squared over R and convert everything, all three of these branches, into full values of power. Once we have those full values of power, we can then go and put the whole thing into power triangles. And then once we've got the power triangles, we can work back for all the rest of our things like our impedance and you know, phase angle, etc. from there. So we're gonna start by taking everything to a complete power standpoint once again. Uh, different than the book. The book does a different uh, method. Follow through what the book does. The book goes all the way into currents. They establish all the currents and then they go and add currents in phase, out of phase, etc. Use Pythagoras to go and get to their line current over here. And from there, they work backwards into their Z. We're just going to get there off of a different value. They do also show inside of your binder that alternative method for finding your impedance where they're going to go and use that root of, you know, inverse of squares, etc methodology you can go through and give it a try um, by all means you know punch in those values see if it works out for you but you'll find that it is a cumbersome and an unwieldy way of doing so so let's work with what works well for us we're going to go and take our values of voltage for each of those branches we'll start with our branch number one which has got a 15 ohm resistor we're going to go e squared 120 squared divided by 15 which gets me out to a value of 960 watts that we will have on here 60 watts for that one. We'll go over to this one. This one's got double the resistance, so it should work out to become half the value. 120 squared divided by 30 ohms now. And we see that we're at 480 watts over here. And then for my last one, we're going to go and use the same format. 120, my E squared, divided by my XC, which is 24 ohms in this case, which gets me to a value of 600 bars. Perfect. Now that we've got that, we're just going to go and add all of these together vectorally into a triangle that is going to go and give us power. Now you'll note that I'm drawing my bars downward now because that is the convention or the standard for capacitance that we were going to have. So let's go and put those values in right now, 600 for this one, 960, 480 that we're going to have, and we'll add those all together. We'll put them at the proper phase angles, so 480 angle zero plus 960 angle zero plus 600 angle negative 90. And that's going to go and give me a value of 1440. That's my XY. You'll note that it's still inside of XY there. So we want to go find the vector sum first, which is going to be this value here, 1560. Draw that in. 1560. And then we can go and find our angle just by going second comma like that. And that's going to go and tell us it's at negative 22.6 degrees. We'll place all of these values in. Theta equals negative 22.6 degrees that we are going to have. My VA is going to be 1560 volt amperes that I'm going to have off of that one. And then if I go back into this one over here and I do that conversion back into that XY, 
he came up with this number when we first add up 1440, and 1440 was simply going to be my x value, which you'll notice the sum of 480 plus 960, which is my total watts for the circuit itself. So this circuit over here has got a VA 1560, it's got a total watts of 1440, watts total, and it's got a total bars of that 600 bars. And, you know, we can place that all off of this side over here. Bars. And we're going to identify these as being C, capacitive types of bars that we have over here. Lovely. Let's work off of this VA and this volts and establish our values of line current now. Because that line current is going to go out and then it's going to split down into each of these individual values over here. 1560. VA divided by 120 volts tells me that I've got 13 amps that I am going to go in hand. So I've got 13 amps of current that is going to go head out into here. Now that amps of current is heading out at negative 22.6 degrees. Some of it is going to split and become zero degree current, these ones over here. Some of it's going to split and become negative 90 degree current, these ones over here. So that's going to and from the place of that capacitor that we are going to have. Let's go and split up our currents. Easiest way to go and split up our current and find out what we are going to have is for us to go and take that total amount of current, 13, and we'll put it in at the negative 22.6, and that's going to tell us this, and that's going to tell us our total amount of resistive current. We'll still have to split that down after, but there's no getting away from that little bit of work that we are going to have. So 13 at angle, negative 22. Oh, that's too many. 22.6 equals, and because it was already an xy, it's making that conversion right away without me having to tell it. Uh, it's just displaying it as xy, I should say. Uh, it tells me that my x value is going to be 12 amps, so I'm going to have 12 amps of true, pure, resistive current over here. And then if I go back to my calculator, I see that I've got a negative 4.995, so a 5 amps that I'm going to go and have over here. If I go over here, that makes sense, 600 bars, you know, for my power. Uh, this is going to be 5 amps of current over here. This other 12 is being split between these two for us to figure out how much is going to each one. Just use straight up Ohm's law there. I is equal to E over top of R. We'll do it off of this one over here. We know that that 12 amps, part of it's going to go down into here. So if we've got 120 volts divided by my resistance of 30 ohms over here, 120 divided by 30, is going to go and give me a value of 4 amps that I would have through here. And if I've got 12 amps of resistive current in total, and 4 are going down here, then the remaining 8 would have to be going down through here. You could just do 120 divided by 15. You'd also come out to 8 on that one there as well. All right, anything that we are missing, we've got current in each branch. We've got the total in-phase current. Uh, total in-phase current is going to be this 12 amps that we see. Uh, quadrature current, we've got that. That's going to be my 5 amps. Line current, we've got that. That's my 13 amps. Impedance of the entire circuit, we do not have that one yet. We'll grab that in a second. True power taken by the circuit, that's this 1440. Power factor, we don't have that one yet. And phase angle, we do have that one. So let's go find our power factor. We're just going to take the cosine of negative 22.6 which gets me to a value of 92% that I'm going to go and have. Now this is going to be a 92% leading because it is only capacitive inside here. So PF equals 92% lead. I'm going to identify that like that. I've got a power factor inside of here. Now we're going to look for our impedance. Once again, we can go and say that R is equal to my E over top of I. My value of volts, 120 volts, that I'm going to go and have divided by my 13 amps is going to go and give me my total amount of opposition, which is going to be impedance because it's made up of all of this together. 20 divided by 13 equals a value of 9.23 amps. All right, ohms. Place that in over here, 9.23 ohms, and subscript that as being a Z for impedance. Okay, that is our first one over here. They then do go through and they draw the currents. Once again, I've drawn my currents upside down because I basically treat everything for my
capacitors, put them in the downward, everything from my inductors into upward. Uh, it is potato potato. There is a proper way if I am actually referencing, if I have drawn out my voltage, then absolutely I would need to have my currents in the top. If I have not drawn out my voltage though, I can just put these things down into the bottom. It's you know AC, it alternates, changes direction. Just once again, keep track of what type of currents you're adding together. And if obviously I had some inductive components, I would have to add those in opposition. We will see that on the next ones. There's their current triangle. They're drawing it with the reference voltage because they place that reference voltage in there. They have to draw it in that direction. If you're not putting the reference voltage in there, it's not going to make as much of a difference to you. But I should point out that the angles and the values are definitely going to still be the same. This is going to be your 8 amps, this is going to be your 4 amps, this is going to be your 6 amps, and this over here is going to be a grand total of 13 amps. Let's move over to circuit number 4. Circuit number 4 is now going to go and take all of these together. So actually, we're not going to move over onto circuit number 4. We're going to pause this video because this is just the RC one. We will deal with circuit number 4 in a minute.